Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Clips Toy Shop. On today's review, we take a look at the Hot Toys DC Batman Arkham Origins XE suit. Today, I'll be reviewing this figure in the following categories. Accessories, articulation, design. Is it essential to your collection, functionality, and price? Once all scores are totaled, I'll give you my opinion if this figure is a pass or a purchase. Just to let you know, I am oh so hyped for this. I did not think that we would receive this suit. So the fact that Hot Toys has made this is nearly a dream come true. So for accessories, you actually receive a nice offering. Typically when it comes to Batman figures, Hot Toys usually packs in a lot of items and here is no exception. So we receive 11 hands in total, two on the figure which are open hands. Now, I think my last video quality wasn't that great hopefully it's not the case here but just taking a look at the hands I think that's too much light all right so just minimize the lighting hopefully this is a little bit better hands look particularly good you have some metal hair this part here which is supposed to be like thermal heating we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later but then you also have some texturing in between the fingers if you can see those small deta details sort of hexagon shape really like that and even in the hand itself you have the little orange spot right there going over to batman accessories you have a grappling hook i want to say that we've seen this before if you have the batman arkham knight figure the prestige version or the batman beyond figure believe that item came with them we see two batarangs which i feel that we've seen these before as well and then we receive accessories for the cryo drill really like how this is done you really have some fine details let's see if we could just zoom in a moment look at that the gold is a bit tarnished <laughs> Really like how that looks. Sort of the same colors here. Then you receive this big piece of plastic right here. Very happy to have this accessory. And it is very weathered. Scratches, scars, marring. Really like how this comes out. And then you receive two holograms, which should attach the Batman arm. Now, these appear to be stickers, and that has me bummed, as with some of the previous releases, it was more of a plastic piece. Looked a lot better, didn't feel as cheap. This is definitely a sticker, so not sure how that's going to work. And for our last accessory... We receive the bat cape. Don't worry if you can't see it in its full glory. We'll be sure to take a look at it a little bit later. So for accessories, I am thrilled. I'm gonna give Batman a 10 out of 10. So for articulation, if you bought this figure for how it's going to move, you might as well take it back. So starting with the head. Okay, it looks up barely, but it does go up some does look down a good amount and you have a good amount of pivot and it actually moves back and forth as well so with the arm I'm not expecting a lot of oh don't like that all right I'm going off camera just because I want to be delicate okay the arm went back in it's pretty tightly attached not sure why it came off like that but the arm goes up about that much I'm not sure how much rotation you're going to get on this. Actually, it rotates all the way around. Okay. Now, a lot of pieces here move, such as this, so I may not be able to tell you if there is an upper bicep cut. I don't think there is, but it's hard for me to tell. You do have some rotation. I believe that's at the elbow. Again, all these pieces are moving. It makes it pretty difficult. Elbows might be double jointed. This bends in a lot further than what I thought it would. The wrists are on a hinge. I mean, excuse me, a peg, ball peg. So it'll move in what direction you need it to. Now, moving to the torso, I'm not expecting anything here. Oh, I would be wrong. Well, look at that. Good amount of turning action. 
come down arm. Oh, this arm keeps popping off. This might be an issue. Pretty much no crunch forward, barely none backwards. Using the combination of the two, you do get some forward, some backwards. Great amount of rotation, a lot better than what I thought. Well, able to turn rather. Uh, no pivot. Now with the legs, it kicks out to the side only that much. I would have expected a little bit more because this is a cloth material. Moves forward only that much and that's only if you're holding it. If you let it go, it's actually, that's probably all you're gonna get when it comes to movement. About the same thing backwards. Knees appear to be double jointed, bending in that much. Very hard for me to say where the rotation is as the exoskeleton moves, as well as the knee pads down to the foot. It does rotate, goes down that much, up that much, and it tilts that much to the outside as well as to the inside. Not sure if we try to kick the legs out to the side, but there you go. So for articulation, it's about what I expected. The head actually moves a bit better than I thought, and you actually get more range in the torso area than what I thought that you would. The legs are very restrict restricted. I'm a little bit surprised being that we have this cloth material here. So for overall articulation, I'm gonna give Batman a six out of 10. So for design, first let's take a look at Batman from afar, and then let's go ahead and zoom in so that we can capture all of these details so first looking at the helmet i just love the way that this looks if you look right here you can sort of see that will that actually opens the mask in the game <clears throat> looking in areas you can see some weathering this batman has been in a few scuffles you see a few areas to where you see that silver brushing and I really like that. Also, what I really like about this is that this helmet has some detail. You can see the curves here coming down as almost it's forming on his brow, and I really like that touch. And the eyes are super white, just glaring out at you. Coming down to the glossy bat symbol looks so good. Underneath it, you see two scratches. Not sure how that would help, well, would happen without this getting nicked up, but oh well. And just looking at the suit, those scars just continue. You have a deep one here. I really like this one as if he was shot. This really looks good. And then you have bolts, nuts, and all that stuff. More wear on the shoulder pad. Here you have mechanics, some pistons. And in here you have that mesh material that I was talking about during, on the gloves. Coming to the waist, you have the iconic batman utility belt couldn't think of what it was called for a moment it's not in that yellow we're used to seeing again coming down you have sort of the baggy pants you have this exoskeleton around the leg and whoa am i ever digging that so much again you have some weathering some dents i don't like that like the x for example that looks a little bit easy and cheap the same thing here. I think they could have went without that and just provided lines such as that, more singular lines. Coming to this section of the suit here, you have deep scars in it there. You have some weathering on the leg, more deep scratches that continue on the side. And flipping Batman to the back, just looking at like the gunmetal, really like how, I don't know how to describe it, but the variations in the color here really looks good. Didn't mention the feet, but you have the claws. The same thing here. And they're very shiny silver. And on his hands, you have some more shiny areas as well. Now to my gripe, really my only gripe. And it's this orange that's carried out. So in the game, this is supposed to be thermal heat. Think about if you have a you know, electric radiator at the house and when it gets hot, uh, the metal materials start to look like this. This is what this should have been. Unfortunately, looking here, this was simply painted on. This should have either been some sort of light up feature, which would have been great, 
or possibly some clear plastic hair with some orange fluid, maybe glow in the dark running through it. Now what's odd, looking at his pants, right, the fabric, the orange on this is actually way more vibrant than the orange hair and there, which actually surprised me a bit because this is fabric. Moving to his arms, you see the same thing. All of this should have that glowing feature. So I'm a bit disappointed that that wasn't done in a better way. Looking underneath the knees, you can see that again. And now I guess we're gonna zoom out just a little bit. So it is not the worst thing, but I still think Hot Toy could have found a way to do it better. Definitely should have at least been glow in the dark. So for design, there's no doubt this figure would have been a 10 out of 10. However, I am deducting points for the painted on orange. The question is how many points to deduct? Technically, I can take one off for the arms, one off for the torso, one off for the legs. So for overall design, I'm going to give Batman an 8 out of 10. So is the Batman XE suit essential to your collection? The XE suit stands for Extreme Environment Bat Suit. This bat suit helps Batman in extreme environments, as you can see, mainly cold environments, and is used in a few sequences in the Batman Origin games with Mr. Freeze. By wearing the Batman XE suit, Batman does gain access to new heat-based equipment, such as thermal charge batterings, heat-based takedowns, thermal gloves, and the cryo drill. Outside of the small sequences with Mr. Freeze, I can't think of really another time to where this suit was used. So as far as toy options, I combed far and wide. I found some statues, but as far as action figures, this is the only one that I can find that resembles this. There are several other Batman suits, but they don't look like this one. So as far as being essential to your collection, I'm going to give Batman a 6 out of 10. So for functionality, the suit clearly passes the stand test. I'm simply holding it because it's on an unstable or unflat unflat non-flat hmm. stand and i don't want this figure to topple over so with functionality i think a good place to start would be the shoulder joints let's just zoom in a little bit so i really like the engineering here a lot of companies are doing this the shoulder joint is actually attached to the arm and it can actually move right so as you lift the arm it can go or get as much range as possible and to hide that gap it you can actually place it over there so really like that i also like the fact that we have soft goods underneath the bits of armor and additional layering you have that soft goods here the pants here also down on the legs as well now what i don't like is the fact that we have soft goods but we're still only able to capture that much range that is extremely disappointing and i have no idea why this is so limiting as you can see this flexes as well as this piece flexes and here this is on a band so we should have more range especially within these legs when handling this figure certainly be careful with the points they are very sharp and with some pressure, this will absolutely snap. The same can be said for these below. They are not die cast, if you're wondering. None of this figure is die cast. I would have loved if we had some areas that were die cast, such as this, parts of the gauntlet, definitely the shoulder pads, and no question the exoskeleton. All right, let's turn the figure to the back. If you look here, you have four holes. Let's put these arms down. And the reason that we have those holes, who would Batman be without a cape? So with the cape, you have four prongs, which should just tap in very easily. Make sure that it's all lined up. It's lined up. There we go. And it's up to you to decide whether you want him on, want, want him, excuse me, with the cape or not. Okay, so with the cape, I did not think that we had a bendy wire. There is. It runs in the front of the cape. And if you can see me bending it out, it does both sides. But the bendy wire ends right at the bottom, so you're unable to bend any of this. I think that the bendy wire should have went all around the cape. 
So let me go ahead and move Batman for a moment. Let me grab some of his hands. Now, what I like about the hands, are we focused? Okay, we were a little out of focus. Hopefully we're back nice and clear. The hands appear to be designed for a specific weapon. We're gonna see if that's the case. So with this hand, I'm gonna to try to place the grappling hook here. And that absolutely works. So let's put this one down to the side for a moment. So next, let's take a look at the cryo drill. I like that we have a function in part which turns. This is pretty important as it has a plug-in. So you wanna make sure that the opening with the two holes is facing upwards. Now, for the two accessories that come with this, we're gonna use the taller one first. Don't remember which way it's supposed to go, but maybe depending on how it fits, it'll give you an idea. So there we go. So with the shorter attachment, I will put it in momentarily. Well, I guess I can do it. I just wanna see how Batman holds this cryo drill, but let's go ahead and throw in the second accessory. So the pegs on the hands are very thin. I would be super careful. So we're going to plug this in. I was expecting this part to get in the way, but it doesn't. And here you are with your grappling hook. Oh, that actually detaches. Cool. That detaches as well. Cool. So there are two sets of hands, which I believe might work for the cryo drill, but I'm going to try the same ones that I use for the grappling hook. So these hands might be the better option holds it pretty well. The issue is going to be getting the arms connected. Okay, so you certainly can get Batman holding this in one arm hand, but it's no way you're gonna get him using both hands as there's no butterfly joint. The arms don't collapse. That is very unfortunate. So if you're gonna carry that, you're gonna sort of have to have him holding it down. And there it is, it fell or sort of open hands and holding it like this. And if you wanna see how that looks, he's holding it from the side, which there aren't grips, instead of from the back where he should be holding it. So yeah, this, this doesn't work. Let's move Batman again as we have some batter rings. For the batter rings, we have these hands right here. Simply going to slide the thin battering there. Holds that pretty good. And that battering just looks so small within his hand. But he holds it pretty good. All right. And there's also one accessory that I did not show. Hopefully I can find it. I know I said one accessory. It's actually two. So you actually have a very nice base. I am not going to assemble it because I don't use bases. But it comes with a nice ice sculpture. Or glaze comes with a nice ice something. So for those of you that are interested, you do have that. So here's a piece that I did not show earlier. This is for the sticker, which attaches to Batman arm, or it should. That's what it does with the Origins Arkham Knight version. Uh, let's see how this works. Okay, so I have the Sideshow exclusive, which comes with two stickers. I don't know which one is the exclusive, but I'm very unhappy with this. So what you have to do is remove the sticker and attach it here. Doesn't that suck? Wouldn't it have been much better to have this as a cutout without the yellow edges? That way you can just slip it in the background. So how do you use the two that can't be interchangeable? The moment you remove one, the sticker loses its adhesive and it's no longer functional. Um, that's a loss. So here it is attached, not perfect. Lines could go up, I missed the line a little bit here. I'm gonna have to live with that. If you wanna see how Batman holds it, there it is. If you're able to get the one that came with the Arkham Knight, that is a much better version than this one here. Okay, so for functionality, I'll certainly be deducting some points. One, he cannot hold a cryo drill, excuse me. I'll also be deducting points for this sticker accessory. This should have been done better. 
they had the technology already. Why not just use it? So for overall functionality, I'm giving Batman a 7 out of 10. So for pricing, the Batman XE suit comes in at a whopping $375. Add in taxes, add in shipping, you're looking at a price point of roughly $435. So now is the Batman XE suit worth the price of admission? Well, let's see what he comes with. In terms of accessories, you receive a whole lot. You receive some great Batman gadgets, the batarangs, several pair of hands, the cryo drill, which is an excellent piece, as well as some accessories which attach to that, which really makes that cryo drill stand out. Not that I'm deducting points, but one accessory that I wouldn't mind seeing if we had an additional head with that open mass feature, or if this mass was functional and could open. Now my two gripes on the pricing, one is not having a light up feature, at least in the chest area. That would have really brought that thermal feature to life. Next one is that this figure is almost Iron Man price. However, it has none of the die cast. We should have seen some die cast components within this suit especially the exoskeleton. It did not have to be every single piece of the suit, but I would have liked it for the head, the shoulder pads, the gauntlets, and again, the exoskeleton, and maybe even the shins. So for pricing, things this figure should have been around that 285 to 305 price mark. So I'm gonna give this figure a seven out of 10 for pricing. That should give the Batman XE suit an overall cliff score of so now is this figure a pass or a purchase? So if you saw any of my most wanted videos, you know that this was up there. I didn't think this was something that we would actually get. I actually wrote Jazz Inc. to see if they would be interested in building this because I didn't think it was any other way of getting this suit. So the fact that this suit is widely available, you can go online and get it. Oh! So for me, this is an absolute purchase. If you are a Batman fan, not just talking about the Arkham series, but if you are a Batman fan in general, you probably have a lot of standard Batman figures in your collection. The fact that you can add something to that collection that's widely different, especially if you have your Batman figures on display, this can just be one of those suits just waiting for him to wear at some point. I am ecstatic for this, even with all its limitations, even with the price. This may be one of my favorite figures out of the year just because I didn't think that it was happening. So for scale, I may not have a lot of comparisons, but here he is next to the sideshow Harley Quinn. Forgot that I had that figure. Yeah, but this actually works well with this Batman. All right, so I have another comparison. Let's go ahead and throw in this big boy here, which is the Hot Toys Igor. All right, so at least I was able to give you some perspective as far as size. Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Clips Toy Shop. I hope to see you during the next episode.